Welcome back to the Morgan Streetman Show. Someone who was right on with their Bucks prediction, a win. Governor Ron DeSantis, he called this. Hey, well, you know, and I called, I want to say I called it too against the Vegas odds makers. Somebody was telling me yesterday the Vegas odd, odds makers have Kansas City winning. I, I don't run into, I don't know what the exact line was on it, but anyway, I just thought, well, you know what? I think Brady, I don't think you can bet against Tom Brady. I don't think you bet. And here we are, hometown. I mean, come on, could you have any more? advantages. I don't think so. So, but yes, good job, Governor DeSantis, and a good job in so many ways Governor DeSantis has done for our state from his response to the coronavirus, which proved out to be the correct response. I mean, our economy here is doing so much better than, I mean, I feel bad for people in California and New York where they've had their businesses shut down. Small business has been crushed. Now, wonder these poorly run states and poorly run cities are basically bankrupt. They're so poorly run. And what's the answer that they want to push forward now? And they'll probably get it. They want to push forward some kind of stimulus to bail them out. They have bankrupted themselves. So it's like if you ran up your credit card bills through profligate spending – you're a spendthrift. You just you just waste your money, and it's not even your money. You waste borrowed money, and you, you literally put yourself into such a bad situation. And then your neighbor, who's been smart enough to live frugally and within their means, they have the amount of money that you need to pay off your credit card debts, and you just go take that money and pay off your credit card debt. I mean, what does that encourage, right? That encourages people to live, you know. And live in a bankrupt lifestyle to spend all their money to spend more than they make because you know somebody's going to come save me, and why? So why ha- why eat rice and beans all the time, like Dave Ramsey would tell you to? Why why live frugally? Why do that when you could just do whatever you want and somebody else is going to have to pay for it? Anyway, Governor DeSantis has done great things with the coronavirus response. He's done great things. I mean, he's got to be right now, if not the top, he's got to be one of the very top Republican leaders in the entire country. And I think a potential front runner for the next presidential election. If if everything holds and he stays on the right course and continues to have some political success, which, you know, we'll have to see what happens. But So far, I think Governor DeSantis has done a great job. I think his entire administration has done a great job. And he's really taking the lead now. I think he's recognizing that he's one of the few national leaders who has the possibility to take over the mantle of the Republican Party from Donald Trump and to to actually lead forward the conservative movement. And if he doesn't do it, you know, you're going to have people like Liz Cheney and Nikki Haley vying for the spot. And they're not. You know, they're not. Well, you make up your own mind about those people. But Governor DeSantis is a true conservative. So just last week, he announced legislation, which is great here in the state of Florida, that they're putting forward. And of course, we are a pretty big state. So we have some pull. We have some say. He's announced legislation that will prevent Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Google, YouTube, Amazon and Apple from censoring content or selling people's data. And one of his comments was that big tech has come to look more like Big Brother with each passing day. Big Brother being the reference to 1984, right? And that's so true that we've got these platforms that used to be, you know, fairly neutral. They were like the bulletin boards where, yeah, you could go post some crazy idea on them. And the platform itself wasn't censoring most people. I mean, even in what we've heard are some pretty egregious cases They've left the posts up. Now, these are things that, you know, aren't appropriate, shouldn't be published. And it's not these are not opinions. These are actual things that should not be published. But the these different publishers have left them up. And, you know, we're talking about things like child pornography, just to be completely straight with you folks. That kind of stuff has been left up on Twitter. That's not taken down nearly as fast as statements about election fraud are. How about statements about violence towards women? Violence towards women, some of the Islamic terrorists, all of those people, they've been allowed to keep their accounts and they've been allowed to post. Uh, but, you know, certain wrong think in the political context here in America has been obliterated. So Governor DeSantis said, and this was great, he was on Fox and Friends 
uh, over the weekend and discuss some of this upcoming legislation against these big tech monopolies. And he said, and I'm quoting, we want to make sure they are not interfering in our elections by deplatforming candidates and silencing people they disagree with. But then also the broader censorship of deplatforming of society. I mean, they have the ability to wipe you off the map online. People's businesses are linked to being able to reach people through these platforms. They've wiped that out for people they haven't liked. That's very, very ominous. They're acting as monopolies that are exerting more power than the monopolies had at the turn of the 20th century. And he said, just think. Think about it. They will deplatform a conservative, but then they will allow the Ayatollah Hamani to spout all this hate about Israel and the Jews. And that's kind of the point that we're making. Thank you for listening to the Morgan Streetman Show. We hope you enjoyed what you heard. And if you did, please click like and subscribe to help us out. And remember that we recommend that you exercise your brain at least once a week.